announcement. We're going to a Big Ten ACC matchup in the Southeast. Second round play at Nashville. Tim Ryan and Ann Myers for Wake Forest and Iowa. Take it away. All right, Jim. Yes, here in Nashville. Second round action in the Southeast. We'll begin the day with the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. And they are the number five seeds against the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Out of the Big Ten, seated at number four. From here, we will have the top seed in the southeast, the Wildcats of Kentucky, against number eight, Utah. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jim Ryan here on the campus of Vanderbilt University Memorial Gymnasium for the second round action here from Nashville. You know, number four seeded Iowa has now gone 10 and 5 since the tragic death of their star forward Chris Street back on January 19th. And while Coach Tom Davis declined to use his memory as a motivating factor for his team, the players themselves have said they want to do well for their very popular and much loved teammate Chris Street. And so here they are in the second round taking on Wake Forest in what should be a very good matchup. I am joined by our Hall of Fame basketball player and new mom Ann Myers and and uh, this matchup today figures to be different from the first round in that you've got two teams that are pretty physical but maybe an edge in size and power going to wake for it well you do especially the forward positions with Rodney Rogers and Trelawney on and they are so big six seven and six eight and I talked to Tom Davis before the game and he was saying we're probably not only going man to man but have to switch up into the zone because we can't match up in that forward position Iowa of course does have the tallest man on the court and a pretty good one in AC Earl well AC Earl is going to be a key for Iowa as far as where he gets the ball on the block and that in essence defensively for Wake Forest is going to be a key to try and push him out of position. Two good backcourts. Is there an edge to either team? Well, Childress is, is the main backcourt guy for Wake Forest to try and get his three-point shot off along with Val Barnes. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineups here today. And you can see that Iowa with Rogers and Owens up front, the muscle there that Ann referred to, Hicks in the middle, pretty good size. Should be a pretty good matchup for Earl. And it's Childress and Harrison in the backcourt. Winters and Lookingville with A.C. Earl at center, Smith and Barnes in the backcourt. The word this morning from Iowa that one of their outstanding substitutes, Jim Bartles, a sophomore from Freedom, Wisconsin, is out with the flu, and he is joined uh, in uh, that situation by another reserve player, Kevin Skillett. Coach Dave Odom of Wake Forest, now with a record of 20 and 8 on the season, his fourth year at Wake. The at-large entry that lost to Virginia in the first round of the ACC tournament has his team back on track. A victory over Tennessee Chattanooga, 81 to 58 in the first round. Tom Davis of Iowa, his team beat Northeast Louisiana in the first round here in Nashville, 82 to 69. They now have a record of 23 and 8 in light. Wake Forest, an at-large entry. They are, of course, out of the ACC, out of the, the Big Ten. And the officials are Scott Thornley from Pocatello, Idaho, Richie Ballesteros from San Francisco, and Bobby Vetchetter from Gun Barrel, Texas. You know, you talk about Jim Bartles and Kevin Skillett being out of the game. Both those players average 11, 12 minutes a game, and Bartles averages 16 minutes, 16 points and 7 rebounds. Tom Davis likes to use a lot of substitutes wear the other team down, so that could be a key as far as those two players being out. No doubt. As we said, uh, Bartles uh, was a key performer in the first round game. Kevin Skillett did not appear in that game, but as uh, you mentioned, he does normally get a lot of minutes. Wake Forest is in their goal today, and Iowa and White defending to our right. Kevin Smith, number 10, Val Barnes, number 20, the backcourt for the Hawkeyes. Wake Forest in that 2-3 zone. You can see they're really packing things in, not letting A.C. Earl get that ball. Looking Bill. Hits for three to start the game. Wade Looking Bill. The man who replaced Chris Street in the starting lineup of the Hawkeyes was one of his best friends on the team and felt obviously in somewhat of a strange position earning that spot as he did, but he has played well. Of course, there are about, about three or four other guys that felt that Chris Street was their best friend too. That's right. Very popular player on this team. First foul of the game will go to Earl. Let's make it Winters. Winters picks up the foul. James Winters. 
James Winters. They call him Skywalker on this team. He has great leaping ability. We talked about Winters and looking though, only 6'5", and really not as physical as like a Trelawney Owens or a Rodney Rogers. Winters indeed was Chris Peake's roommate. They live together on the campus, near the campus of the University of Iowa. Junior from Joliet. Owens makes the first. Odom with his glasses on, very superstitious. He, when he gets a winning streak going and he's got his contacts on, he'll keep those contacts on. But he won the other night with his glasses and he's wearing them again. <laughs> Jelani Owens had 22 points against Tennessee Chattanooga in round one. And Coach Odom says that he has uh, been their best player the last several weeks. Scores 81 to 65 Colorado advancing Stanford number one seed in their region advanced as in Western Kentucky along with the men's team of course. Good going by Wake Forest. They're really sagging in again. AC really having a tough time getting the ball where he wants it. The perimeter players really have to take concern as far as trying to get their shot off. Here he's got the ball inside and trying to go back outside. Nobody was there. The defense by Wake Forest is not real, real aggressive. And so Iowa just has to take their time and look for the open pass. 3 2 Iowa lead, early going here in Nashville. Round two, the winner heads to the Sweet 16. Children works his way to the top of the key. A good feed underneath. Rogers. with 17.29 to go in the first half here in Nashville. This is second round action in the Southeast region. Jim Ryan with Ann Myers. And the first substitution of the game made by the Hawkeyes. It is Russ Millard, the freshman from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He joins Kevin Smith, Val Barnes, A.C. Earl, and James Winters. The six points for Iowa have all been from the outside. Wait for it. I should say nine points now.
When you need direction, the Principal Financial Group can guide you toward your goals. With flexible insurance, solid investment strategies, stability you can count on. No wonder people have been coming to the Principal for over a century. To secure your future, to get an advantage, get the Principal Edge. The Principal Financial Group. Choosing your first new car sure can be complicated. There are cars that promise you safety. Cars that are well-built and well-backed. Cars that won't leave you stranded. Cars that give you a break on the price. Even cars that help with your down payment. But Chevrolet makes it easy to get all of the above in the Chevy Cavalier. The lowest priced car in America with standard anti-lock brakes. Test drive Chevy Cavalier today at your neighborhood Chevrolet dealer. These days, people who want to save money on lunch are brown bagging it. Because McDonald's original hamburger is still just 59 cents. Our delicious cheeseburger is 69 cents. And that is no baloney. You are here. She has the traveler's checks here. Uh-oh. Well, how about American Express traveler's checks for two? The only checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. Pretty serious. Light Gear by L.A. Tech. Think of an upper class of sneakers on the court. That is real cool. What have you thought of it? Some big college AAA master's degree <laughs> have them. There must be some brainy mugs. If people start having too much fun with this, they're going to ban it. <laughs> Gotta own the light if you want to own the night. Senseless murder, one man vowed to solve. You still think I did it? Yeah, I sure do. Robert Conrad in a psychological thriller, Sworn to Vengeance, Tuesday. Don't hit that remote switch. We've still got basketball for you. This is outside Memorial Gymnasium at Vanderbilt, where today Michigan State has just beaten Vandy 5-1 to one in the first of two. Let's play two. Well, inside, we're going to play two as well. And it is 10-9, Wake Forest leading Iowa. Iowa and White, Wake Forest and Gold. Later here, it'll be Kentucky and Utah. Children banks it. Wake Forest looks very patient on their offense, breaking that half-court press by Iowa. They have not rushed any shots whatsoever. Nice pass inside. Lookingville off well here in the early going for Iowa. 15.09 to go first half. 12-11, even deep, deep in lead. Rodgers outside, and now he's it off for Childress, and they'll set up the half court. Rodgers going down deep. Temple has been very slow for both teams. Just kind of a chess match. They're just feeling each other out. Harrison tries a lot. convert and the Deacons come away. Number 13, they have Kenyon Murray, reserve forward in. They had 10 points in the victory over Northeast Louisiana in the first round. A freshman from Battle Creek, Michigan. Hicks rebounding on a miss by Rogers from the free throw line. Mark Lucas in at guard for Wake, number 25, a junior from Girard, Pennsylvania. Good outside shooter. Joining Childress in the backcourt. Forest by five. Six points for Owens, who had 22 in the victory in the first round over Tennessee Chattanooga. 
Wake Forest in a man-to-man -man defense. AC Earls hook missed everything. Turnover by Iowa. 13-38 remaining first half. Iowa by 10 by 5, 16 to 11, and make it 7. Rodney Rogers getting the hot hand for Wake Forest. Val Barnes quickly the other one won't go for him. Owens couldn't handle the rebound. Looking Bell. Way Looking Bell. 10 points now. For Iowa, cuts it back to 5. Tim Ryan with Ann Myers here at Nashville. Second round action, Southeast region. Number four, Iowa. Number five, Wake Forest. Travel call, Iowa ball. Well, as soon as I had said that things had kind of slowed down, both teams, all of a sudden, they just turned it up. Dave Odom frantically waving down court. The benches are along the baseline here at Memorial Gymnasium, not on the sideline as usual, and it's a rather unusual Basketball arena at Vanderbilt. Wake Forest 18 to 13. Russ Millard back in the Iowa lineup, number 52, the freshman from Cedar Rapids. He has the ball. And Murray kicks it back out. Offensively, it's Iowa against the zone. If they, as long as they pass the ball and get into those teams, they'll get an open shot. They have had several opportunities, but they've hesitated and then just looked to pass. up high to grab the rebound. Both teams shooting pretty well, but Wake at 70%. Rodney Rogers off best, eight points, two rebounds for the Demon Deacons. Well, one of the reasons Owens and Rogers are getting their shots is because of the guards. The guards are able to get the ball inside of them. Trelawney Owens has taken uh, one or two baseline shots. On the other hand, Iowa, against the zone of Wake Forest, has not been able to get the ball inside. Lutonville has been a bright spot for them outside, inside, but AC Earl has touched the ball twice, and he's been able to pass once for two points, and then have a hook shot that wasn't even close. Lucas miss, missed the uh, first of two, 18 to 13. These teams are already into the Sweet 16. Indiana having some problems with Xavier before advancing, and Virginia, a winner earlier today. So Lucas missed both. Smith driving into traffic. All tangled up with the big guys, but Iowa control. Winters in Millard. Well, Iowa is coming off a season-high 25 turnovers against Northeast Louisiana, so you would think that Tom Davis would talk to his team about really taking care of the basketball. Millard pulls his way up. Good job by Russ Millar, the freshman from Cedar Rapids. And the Hawkeyes have to continue to try and get it inside, even if they can draw a foul. Try and get it to their big guy. Charlie Harrison, the transfer from Georgetown. Lucas misses. Good follow. Hicks. That time the Hawkeyes really sagged on defense. They challenged Childress to take that shot, but Iowa has to do a better job blocking out Wake Forest. Wake Forest has really attacked the offensive board. Deacons by five. Iowa trying to get into their 
half-court set. Webb in the middle, and he hits from the lane. Jay Webb, 6'8", senior from San Jose. Espinaz passed inside by Winters to the high post. Iowa has not used that high post as of yet, and that was the first time. Webb giving Earl a rest. Wake Forest so far out rebounding Iowa, and they lead the nation in rebounding, the Hawkeyes do, with an 11.3 margin. Iowa averages 43 and a half rebounds to Wake Forest is 38 rebounds. So Iowa just has been kind of passive. I mean, they're concentrating on defense, obviously, but then they need to block out. Rodney Rogers for three. He'll hurt you from everywhere. 11 points. He shot the three this year. He's now 23 of 62. remains here in the first half. Wake up 23 to 18. Winners on the line for Iowa. Make it 23 to 19. 8.56. Left to play first half. The NCAA Women's Final Four, April 3rd on CBS. The higher you go, the more power you need. I go around as strong as I could be. I go around. Nothing ever got to me. That's why up here, they depend on the most horsepower ever in a turbo diesel pickup. I go around. Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. I now at Goodyear, you can save 50% on the second tire when you buy one tire at the regular price. That's half off Goodyear premium all-season radials for cars and light trucks. Any way you look at it, you save. Only at Goodyear now. I'm on my way to Atlanta, Georgia to see what makes Ace the place. It's got to be the values, John. Like a heavy-duty Rubbermaid laundry basket for just $2.88 and this Ace 34-gallon wheel trash can for only $9.77. Hey, Ace is America's place for better values. This is Larry. This is his package. While Larry sleeps, the UPS Total Track System works round the clock. Tracking any air or designated ground package. It even records the recipient's signature. So now, anytime, Larry can get the status of his package in seconds. Larry doesn't work around the clock, but his delivery company does. UPS, the package delivery company more companies count on. Too many businesses today leave their customers up in the air. But Allstate is different. Your Allstate agent's job is to keep you secure for years to come. To stick by you so that you stay with Allstate for your car insurance and home insurance. For years. For life. Tennessee Music City, USA, so the college bands are contributing their form of music. 
city of Nashville this afternoon on a beautiful, bright spring day. Baseball outside, hoops inside. March Madness in Nashville. 43 to 19, Wake Forest on top. Tim Ryan with Ann Myers. 8.50 to go, first half. Well, something to look at in this first half so far. AC Earl right there. He finally gets one knocked down and into the game, but he has been held scoreless in this first half and has not been a factor defensively either. Kevin Smith sets up the half court for Iowa. Looking Bill. Back to Kevin Smith. Tried to feed it inside the Barnes and. Wake broke it up. Let's see who gets the ball. Well, that's the first time the Hawkeyes have penetrated against that zone. Might have been an inadvertent whistle. Scott Thornley apparently blew the whistle, and he's now consulting with Richie Ballesteros. And this is where it's really hard for the coaches to see Tom Davis standing down on one end. And usually in, in other arenas where the coaches are right there, they can go to the middle of the floor and find out what the official is doing or calling and that, these coaches are kind of in the fog right now except Dave Odom because it's down at their end. And he, well Odom's got the advantage right now because now, Tom is taking a long walk from the other end of the court. Now this is Memorial Gymnasium in Vanderbilt. Davis got all the way down to the official scorer's bench where he is, <laughs> is right now. His team's got the ball, but I think he wants to know what's going on. Absolutely. It's a road trip to get there. <laughs> I think he had to make a plane change. Well, we know Dave Odom got his run in today, and he, Tom Davis just got his walk in. Well, this was an unusual <laughs> spot. 14,600 fans crammed in here. We're down below the level of the court. We need periscopes to call a game from here. It was originally built as a concert stage and a basketball floor back in 1960, and they just added on seating over the years to this present capacity. Well, the coaches just want to know what's going on. That's <laughs> However long they have to walk to find out. <laughs> well, we did not get any kind of positive results here. Uh, well, we're in no position to get information either. No, that's for sure. We'd have to send a carrier pigeon. <laughs> Right now, the score still stands 23 to 19, and it remained Iowa ball, which was the key thing that happened. Smith hits for three. Kevin Smith, the junior from Fort Worth. And we're down to a point now. Iowa trailing by one. Wade looking, Bill, right on the ball. Good aggressive play, trying to get his team up defensively. Twenty three to twenty two. Wake Forest with the ball and the one point lead. And for three, Childress. Five points for Randolph Childress, the sophomore from Clinton, Maryland. Looks a little bit more aggressive coming out, attacking that zone now. The last two, three possessions. Winters cuts it back to a two-point margin. Oklahoma State, two nothing. Our last score from there against Louisville, and the clock is still out. There's a power problem in Indianapolis, and so that game has uh, been held up at least for a time. And we have brought you to this one. Those of you who are watching that game will return you there as soon as they get power restored. In Indianapolis. Kick from outside. Oh! And it's rebounded by the Hawkeyes, James Winters. Kevin Smith off the front iron. Barnes rebounding. The Earl. Fall away is good. First basket for AC Earl. And we're tied at 26. pressing down the floor on that inbound. Both teams have been pretty patient in the half-court game, but when they've gotten the running going, both teams have taken advantage of that because the defense has not been able to get back and adjust to where the offense is running at them. Kalani Owens, nowhere to go on the baseline. And time is called. 6.14 to go. We're tied at 20. Better things.
things to do than having to think about how much you're paying for long distance. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this stuff. So AT&T makes it easy. With the iPlan, you get a good deal no matter how you call. No lists, names, or hassles. I is for simple. To switch to AT&T free, call 1-800-582-7800. I is for individual, only from AT&T. Before we could map out how far the Seville STS would go before its first scheduled tune-up, we first had to create a new map, big enough to chart the durability of Cadillac's North Star V8, a map that spans 100,000 miles, or the equivalent of four trips around the world. The Seville STS, North Star System by Cadillac. Changing the way you think about American automobiles, 100,000 miles at a time. One-topping pizzas, a salad for four, even cookies. Dinner for four, just $13.99. A great reason to stop and smell the pizza. You forgot to pay me. You shrink from human contact. You avoid each other like the plague. You are not you yet. Moldy breath. But the rinse of sticky, pasty film in your mouth is affecting your mind. But there's hope. There's scope. Scope's antibacterial action kills millions of morning breath bacteria. So no wonder Scope helps get your whole mouth clean. Suddenly your breath's minty fresh, and so is your outlook. Morning breath's a problem, but you can chip it goodbye with Scope. Back in Nashville, second round action, Southeast region. That's A.C. Earl, the first there with a the black cap on. Proud father of A.C. Earl II, who is performing here for Iowa today. You can see both teams shooting very well. Iowa 10 of 16, Wake 11 of 16. And the Hawkeyes losing two players to the flu overnight. Jim Bartles, who plays quite a bit. And Kevin Skillett, also a man who's had his minutes over the course of the year. And they like to use a lot of folks out there, so they're missing two from the bench today. Barnes inside for Earl. Well, the one thing you have to give credit to the Hawkeyes for, there's a great move right there. Second foul on Hicks. Lucas rebounding for Wake. Children. Three. No. Follow. Good. Rogers. And there you talk about the big body as far as screening out. Iowa really has to concentrate on Rogers and Owens, but not only the big body, they're so quick. And it's difficult sometimes when you get a big guy that's slow of foot like an AC Earl cannot screen out somebody as quick as a Rodney Rogers. Earl, nice move inside. Lucas commits the foul that time, and Earl more aggressively going to the basket now. We're tied at 28. Also, you see the defense for Wake Forest. Hicks kind of getting caught behind A.C. Earl. And Iowa doing a much better job getting him the ball and moving the ball around the perimeter, which leaves him open. And he's able, nice little move right there, coming back to the left side and, and creating the foul. But A.C. Earl really has to get involved in this offense. And Iowa, I think, has done a good job as far as kind of taking their time. They didn't force things into it. One more free throw for Earl would make him the second all-time scorer at the University of Iowa. He has the Hawkeyes up by one, 5.17 to go. Two substitutes ready to come in. Glasper for Kevin Smith in the backcourt. 
and they'll wait on the next one. Tom Davis says that he has really improved his game as far as rebounding passing this year. So a pair by A.C. Earl, and he'll uh, get a rest. And he goes to the bench as the second leading all-time scorer at Iowa. Jay Webb comes in to replace him, the senior from San Jose. Number 42. Good effort there. A flying interception by Glasper. And Glasper with a dish for Webb. bench comes alive 32 to 28 Hawkeyes by four Monte Glasper with a great steal and the defense creates the offense for Iowa Childress and Lucas the backcourt for Wake Banks in the lineup at forward with Owens and Rogers Last for rebounding. Murray. Thirty-two to thirty-four to twenty-eight. Iowa. Timeout called. Four thirteen to go in the first half. And watch Lasper fly in here and make that interception. There are cars with advanced engineering. There are cars that make you comfortable. There are cars that are well protected. There are cars that protect their occupants well. There are cars equipped the way you want. And cars that are easy to own now. Which one should be your new car? All of the above. Chevy Lumina Euro Sedan. Test drive a Chevy Lumina Euro today at your neighborhood Chevrolet dealer. It has a powerful overhead valve engine, smooth five-speed transmission, has the best resale value of any make, and comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. The cost? Just $1,999. It's the John Deere 12.5 horsepower STX 38 lawn tractor. At just $1,999, it's our lowest price ever. of evidence April 2nd. All right, Jim, Mike, and Raf back in New York. Let's take a little walk around the country. First in Tucson, about a minute to go in the first half. A 10-point lead for George Washington in this game, Bill Raftery. Uh, GW putting Southern on the line. Mike, they only have 33 shots, a long way to go to get 93. But bench scoring for GW, very important. Evans with 10 points early on. So we saw the three up the lead to 13. Now, New Mexico State and Cincinnati playing in East Region action at Syracuse. 7.20 on the clock, you see it. That is not an error. That is 34 to 8, Cincinnati. Right? Give me a team you pick to go to the Final Four. Cincinnati defense, defense, and more defense. New Mexico State, when they don't turn it over, which they've done 11 times, they can't make a bucket against this swarming Cincinnati defense, which looks very much like one of the top defensive teams in the country. Meanwhile, 
in the first half. 12 minutes to go, first half. Oklahoma State leads by 10. They had to endure a 21-minute delay because of a, was it a phone outage or a power outage, Mike? Well, it's folks from Xavier calling a dome. <laughs> <laughs> but well, back in action here, Rap. What's the story? Early Louisville went inside, and they were very effective, as you see here. It's a matter of hitting shots Oklahoma State able to convert. All right, Wake's within three. We'll get uh, to a couple of those sites coming up at halftime. Back to Tim and Ann. 345 remaining first half. Iowa leads by 334 to 31. Tim Ryan and Ann Myers here in Nashville. Lucas and Childress the backcourt for Wake right now. The Banks, Rogers, and Trelawney Owens up front. Iowa sent Val Barnes back into the backcourt. Senior starter. And Trelawney Owens from behind the backboard. What an angle on that one. Eight points for him. 34 to 33. Well, if he's not underneath the basket getting rebounds, that's his shot on the baseline. A.C. Earl from outside. Eight points for Earl. Earl with Winters. Lasker, Barnes, Millard. This is his own defense by the Hawkeyes. Point Iowa lead. Seven turnovers for Wake Forest in this first half with 2.34 to go. Smith in for Glasper. Glasper really did a good job as far as picking up the defense for the Hawkeyes. And looking Bill back in at forward, number 34, the senior from Fort Dodge, Iowa. Hit two three pointers to get Iowa off well in this first half. Kenyon Murray back in at forward, number three. Murray with it on the baseline. Turned around by Earl off the front of the rim and rebounded by Banks. Now coming up on Prudential Securities at the half, Jim Nance, Bill Raftery, and Mike Francesa will all be there and will also take a look in live at this contest Oklahoma State leading Louisville 19 to 11 in the first half Eddie Sutton Denny Crown there's a coaching matchup Childress to the glass one point Iowa lead Murray 38 to 35 you know, for Wake Forest, they've been very patient on their offense. Childress is the one guy, though, that really has to create things out there. He did on the last possession, but he's the one that is going to get things going as far as the passes, the penetration, or the outside shot. Rodney Rogers deep in the corner, elected not to shoot. Lucas and Childress to backcourt. And now he tries from the corner for three, and that's no good. Rebounded by Banks. Travis Banks. Sophomore from Clinton, North Carolina. One point Iowa lead. 38 seconds left in counting. First half. Both teams have shot the ball well from the floor. Wake Forest shot 63% against Tennessee Chattanooga. Interception. Picked off by Banks. Fifteen seconds left. You know, the one thing that's really impressed me in the first half was both these teams in the half-court game, how patient they've been. Rogers missing, looking Bill, rebounding, and the player goes up from Barnes, and we have a tight tilt. Zeros are up. Iowa 38, Wake Forest 37. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship continues after this message and a word from your local station. 
CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by AT&T, the right choice. Pizza Hut, who reminds you that anytime's a great time to stop and smell the pizza. And by Bud Dry, for a beer that's refreshingly different, try Bud Dry. Lisa's great, but there's something about Sharon. Sharon's okay. Lisa, whew, what a knockout. Why is the grass always greener on the other side? 821, London. I tap danced the news of peace in our Nikes for $39.98 almost all the way around the world. But I still don't know if the name Spice has made it to the international punk scene in Piccadilly Circus. Have you ever heard of the Spice store? Nein, habe ich nie gehört. Was soll das sein, Spice? Um, have you ever heard of Indiana? Oh, Indiana, Bobby Knight. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard of Bobby Knight? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Could this be Ivan okay. Renko's sister? In 1590, Galileo hypothesized that all objects fall at the same rate. But then, he never considered the depreciation rate of luxury automobiles. The Lexus LS400 has retained more of its value than any other car in the luxury class. Cash in at Lexus of Fort Wayne today. Prudential Securities at the half. Sponsored by Prudential Securities. The most important thing we earn is your trust. All right, Raph and Mike, it's a one-point game at halftime. Iowa leading 38 to 37. We're going to look in at some action now elsewhere. First, we're headed to the Hoosier Dome, where Oklahoma State leads by eight over Louisville. And back to Dick Stockton and Al McGuire on the microphones with a look at this game. Just under nine minutes to go in the first half. It's been Oklahoma State all the way. Here is James Brewer on the other side. Hopgood, who's just come in the game. And another shot for Louisville. Troy Smith couldn't get the ball up. And now Oklahoma State coming down with leading by eight. Well, they're matching big bodies out there now. You've got Bennett and Rees for Oklahoma State and Hopgood and Rozier. Rozier now on the bench. Brewer on the steal. Numbers are right. Morton should score. Two on one. But he couldn't control. Wayne Morton couldn't control, and he's telling Brewer the pass wasn't just right. Nah, Brewer, that was a good pass. The bounce pass, the right pass in that situation. Wow. The Bearcats. 41 over New Mexico State, 9. You know what that means, Dick? Is that their pressure is turning over New Mexico State. And when they start, when they start turning you over, they continue like a barracuda. They need the lights to go out in that building. And it's not all their offense, but the defense probably created at least half of that. Morton trying to scoop his way in. Looks like he walked the country mile that time. Oklahoma State committing the foul. And it'll be against Collins, who's come in, Terry Collins. So let's check who's in there now. Dwayne Morton will be on the free throw line. He's got James Brewer, Troy Smith, Brian Hopgood, and Greg Miner. Two shots for Dwayne Morton. Leading scorer at 16.6 points a game for Louisville. He's a junior and leads the nation in three-point field goals. And he doesn't have deep rotation, so he got three of the starters sitting out right now, trying to give him two or three minutes rest. They'll be back in before the six-minute mark. Both free throws, so Scott Sutton, Terry Collins, and Von Bennett from the bench in there now. Full court pressure by Louisville. Thompson and Reeves, the only starters in there for the black shirted Cowboys. I would keep a lot of pressure because you got subs in there and the tendency to turn them over. And they're going to call a foul against Von Bennett away from the ball. For Oklahoma State, that'll be their 15 foul. They don't want this game to become a sumo wrestling match. And the last two call turnovers are called on off screen. Otherwise, you're going to have sumo wrestling. Which can only be in Japan, right? I think that's the country. <laughs> Seventh turnover by Oklahoma State. So Oklahoma State leading 21-15, the winner of this game, advancing to St. Louis to the Midwest Regional 
to play Indiana in the next game. An amazing score in Syracuse. Cincinnati and New Mexico State, 329 to go in the first half. And the Aggies still have not reached double figures. Cincinnati, the two seed in the East, so strong looking here today. Southern and George Washington. George Washington scored the first 10 points of the game, and they now lead by 10 at halftime. They're about to start the second half, in fact. Now, earlier today, Indiana won by three over Xavier. Many of you saw that game. Al McGuire raised a, a controversy at the end of that contest when a no call was made on a possible five-second violation that would have given Xavier the basketball back with a chance to tie it. Take me through it, Rap. Well, what happened? Damon Bailey, using great judgment, understanding of the game, takes his time to pick the basketball up and go out of bounds. But the judgment of the official, and this is strictly a judgment call, as the shot is nailed to get it to three, Xavier with a chance if they should steal the ball or get a violation. Bailey looks up, nice pace, steps out of bounds. The official out of bounds is about to start a count and then stop. And this is where the problem arises. They get down, as, and Al's pretty close, almost seven seconds in his count until you release the basketball. But Bailey, with great understanding of the game, was able to maybe cheat a little bit on the clock oh, yeah, was and great. help Indiana. The great, great the way you telestrated that, where he looked up at the clock. In fact, after the game, Damon Bailey was asked about that situation at the press conference. Listen to what Damon Bailey had to say about that situation. You know, you do have a little time that you can go get the ball, and it just so happened that the ball did, you know, go out to the free throw line or about the top of the key, uh, and, you know, that was something that was fortunate for us. You know, I went out and got it and came back and took it out, and you know, like I said, I did take my time, but it was something that, uh, you know, we were aware that they didn't have any timeouts. So chalk it up as a smart play, brilliant play by Damon Bailey. 30 wins now for Indiana on this season for the first time since 1987 when they won the championship in New Orleans. Terrific play by Bailey, and I thought Indiana had trouble getting into its offense. The movement wasn't there the second half. One thing I'm noticing, though, when you go through these rounds, Indiana, Seton Hall yesterday, these other teams that you don't see that much during the season, Xavier or West Kentucky, very quick. They give them a big problem with their quickness. Speed is a problem, but uh, Indiana is so tough with their screens and defensively taking you out of what you want to do. And that wins championships. That speed and quickness, that's what Cincinnati is all about. All right, the game you're watching at the half, it's 38-37 Iowa. And coming into the day, the two experts here circled this one as one that was destined for a close finish. I'm glad we were right for a change. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First time, I was pressed is something I think that concerned for Wake, but two great players, Rodney Rogers and the Duke of Earl. Ooh. Fine performance uh, uh, down on the mark. Wait for you to reach down for that one. Give you a little pop. Easy. All right, we'll continue here on CBS On the Road to the Final Four. Stay with us, everybody. CBS Sports presents Prudential Securities at the Hat. Sponsored by Prudential Securities. The most important thing we earn is your trust. Yeah, I looked at the BMW and the Lexus. And? I drove this. The power, the handling, the control. It was incredible. Really? It's got leather, ABS, dual airbags. It's even supercharged. I could have spent a lot more on the BMW or the Lexus. But why? What is this? The new Bonneville SSEI. We are driving. Very nice. to 37 we'll be back to memorial gymnasium with the second half after this message and a word from your local station you're watching cbs sports exclusive coverage of the ncaa basketball championship want to run all your software fast then look for the intel inside symbol on your next computer it says you've got a real power source on the inside like the upgradable Intel 486 microprocessor. Power it up and run your software at light speed. Intel, the computer inside. In December, Motor Trend chose the all-new Mazda 626ES as a best buy in sports sedans. They praised its handling, standard airbag, room for five real-sized humans, and sporty Luxo surroundings. 
wonder what they'd say about a Mazda 626DX for $199 a month with a thousand down. The $199 lease. But it's only good until May 3rd. So hurry. If your spouse was accused of poisoning your child... I didn't kill my baby. Would you believe she was innocent? I never stopped loving him. Lisa Hartman Black, without a kiss goodbye, tonight. When the city... Stop these crazy people out there from killing each other. It gets too hot. We're cops. Here to clean up the mess. Lee Horsley and the top homicide team. I'm forming a task force, Ryan. Investigate crimes of passion. Somebody gets away with murder. Bodies of Evidence returns Friday, April 2nd. This is CBS. If you had an ordinary checking account and added no service charge checking, interest on checking, overdraft protection, free personalized checks, no annual fees on Visa or MasterCard, direct deposit of government checks, free cashiers and travelers checks, discount brokerage service, a safe deposit box, and called it the New Horizons account from Fort Wayne National Bank, that'd be a pretty good deal. And you probably already qualify. So if you want an account with some extraordinary benefits, get to know a banker at Fort Wayne National Bank. This is Autumn Ridge, the most beautiful Northwest development, where nature never sleeps. Make Autumn Ridge your home. For information, call Colonial Development, the very best. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Mazda. It just feels right. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. And by Intel. The computer inside. <laughs> Welcome back to Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA. And the bands are playing here at halftime. We're about ready to go with a one-point Iowa lead. Over Wake Forest, Tim Ryan with Ann Myers here at Memorial Gymnasium, Vanderbilt University. And a well-played first half. Both teams shooting well from the floor. It's as tight as we expected. Do you get any feel for a trend here for the second half? Well, nobody's really can set the tempo. I mean, it's been a slow pace, and we've seen a couple bursts. But I tell you, both teams are shooting the ball so well that the big thing that I see is the rebounds. Wake Forest with 13, and Iowa with 7. So there has not been much rebounding because of how well both teams have shot. Tom Davis continues to use his substitutes very well, even though he is missing two of them today with the flu, Jim Bartles and Kevin Skillett. As you can see, both teams shooting well. 65% for Iowa, 64 for Wake Forest. No complaints from the coaches there. And rebounds, uh, an interesting story, because Wake Forest out-rebounding Iowa, the top team in the country in that department. And at the moment, uh, Rodney Rogers with 13 for Wake Forest. And Wade Looking Bill got off to a real good start, but he cooled off. He had 10 of the first 13 Iowa points, hitting two three-pointers at the beginning of the game, having scored in the last 11. He's not a guy they look to to do the scoring for them, so that's been a bonus so far. The, the guys who can score got to crank it up in the second half, but Iowa leads by one. And the one thing you noticed also, Tim, was that a zero with eight points had no rebounds. So Wake Forest has done a good job keeping him off the board. And we'll see if Iowa picks things up, not only defensively in this half, but whether they can hit the boards and be strong. Wake Forest in goal, defending to our right. Iowa and White to our left. Childress, first shot of the second half. Great drop for him. Rebounded by Rogers. Another big rebound by Rodney Rogers. And Wake Forest now with 14. Rogers had 26 points and five rebounds in the victory over Tennessee Chattanooga in round one. First foul on Harrison. And Barnes to the line for Iowa. Del Barnes has been very quiet. Only three points in that first half. He really has not looked to shoot the ball. Dave Odom way down at the other end of the court from the action. Barnes hits the first. Here we'll see on the other end, you see how Rodney Rogers uses that big body to really get A.C. Earl out of position to get that rebound. 
He feels working hard to get position, but then he's got to go up and the ball. Wondering about the hair on the back of AC's neck. He has the name Street inscribed, literally uh, shamed in with hairline. And it's his personal tribute to his late teammate, Chris Street. Well, you look at Iowa as kind of a sympathetic favorite as far as Chris Street dying. And, and he died in the middle of the season. I kind of compare it to like the Hank Gathers back in 1990 with Loyola and Bull Kimball. And they made it to the final eight. And I think, because I had done their games the year before, nobody believed that Paul West was could have his team run like they did. They got a shot off every under seven seconds. And nobody in the country believed that they could play like that. And I really think they could have gone to the Final Four if they had not played Las Vegas. Las Vegas ended up winning the national championship that year. But Hank Gathers was such an emotional thing. And that was towards the end of the season when he collapsed and died. Well, these are uh, young men, of course. And uh, there is a lot of emotion involved. You've got college kids, in effect, playing in the NCAA tournament, and the fans and teammates alike remember Chris Street. Rogers fouled by Looking Bill, and Rogers misses the first of his free throw tries. Rogers, a 71% shooter from the line, and Wake just a two of six so far. And you know, there's almost also a comparison to him as far as both players, Hank Gathers and Chris Street, they were such charismatic people. Everybody loved them. They were so sweet to, to all their friends and anybody they met on the street. Looking Bell trying to drill it in there to winners that couldn't hold it. They're tied at 40. Turnover goes to Wake Forest. Charlie Harrison, transfer from Georgetown, a junior, working the backcourt. Foul away from the ball. Winters. James Winters really getting caught behind defensively that time and not be able to make up. He's going to pick up his third personal. And that's the key because Winters is a, is a good defensive player. He's one of their big rebounders. He just cannot afford to get frustrated. He's going to come out of the game right now with Murray coming into the game. But Winters is a big player for Iowa as far as getting a lot of rebounds. Of course, there haven't been too many rebounds to get because of how well both teams are shooting. And he contributed 12 points in the victory over Northeast Louisiana in round number one. So, Kenny Murray comes in for him, the freshman from Battle Creek. They lose a little experience there, but Murray played well in game one. Murray also a big jumper, just like Winters. his feet and then was behind defensively and you think he would have stayed on his feet instead Childress a smart player saw looking to go up in the air and he just kind of he created the bump and that's that three foul. three on looking go and that's the second jump looking go just should have stayed on the ground all he had to do is reach and he knew he made the mistake we're just underway in the second half tied at 40 18 48 to go and Wake Forest at the line in the gold uniform. Childress fouled by Wade Lookingville to pick up his third for Iowa. They now have two players in foul trouble. Nine points for Childress. And a two-point Demon Deacon lead. Kevin Smith driving hard. Iowa looking to pick up the pace a little bit, bring that ball up quickly. Al Barnes working the baseline, nowhere to go. The crowd thought they were going to get into it. <laughs> Sell out crowd, 14,600, and most of them are Kentucky fans. They'll be later against Utah. What a big shot by Kevin Smith. Three points. Iowa by one. Kevin Smith has been very solid at that point position for the Hawkeyes. Harrison for three. Yes. Charlie Harrison, the junior from Washington, D.C. I was slowing it down. Smith and Barnes in the backcourt now. Lard, A.C. Earl, and Murray up front. points for A.C. Earl. 
this press really has not bothered Wake Forest that much. It's not been an aggressive press. They've been not, Iowa has not been able to trap out of it. And there they get the first trap, but Wake Forest has been very patient. Once they break it, you can see Hicks kind of bring it back out. Rodgers for three, has a hit from there off the front iron. Maybe one of the first times or the few times that Wake Forest has had a poor percentage shot. Good hands by the guards by Wake Forest trying to create some havoc. Good recovery there. by Smith. Really lost it. He was double teamed by Harrison and Children. You can see that middle is wide open against that zone. Murray for Barnes. He's got room. Rebounded by Wake. All you see is gold jerseys under there going up to the board. There are kicks. Hawkeyes have not been able to crack that baseline line of Wake Forest to get the rebound. Harrison from Rogers. Earl rebounds. First rebound of the game for A.C. Earl. Smith. Murray down on the ground. He's getting back up. But big bucket by Smith. 47-45, Hawkeyes. Rogers got away with that. Hook line pass, and Childress. Good call by the official. Offensive goaltending. The ball is bouncing way up high. Looks like it was going to go back in, and here Hicks gets the ball. Uh, yeah, hands on it. I think he had that basket, so bad break for Wake there. 15-37 to go, second half. Iowa by two. There it is. No basket. and still respect each other. People have fun when they're married. And then when they get caught, they wind up single again. Good advice, Friday, April 2nd. <laughs> Biggest lead in the game has been Wake Forest by seven. It's down to two, and it could have been a tie ball game again, except for that goaltending call. Derek Hicks just, interference. Got, just got a little anxious that time, but you know that press, what it created was Wake Forest starting to take a quick shot, and I think that's what Iowa would, would like to do is get into a little bit more of a running game and force Wake Forest in an up-tempo game because Wake Forest against that press taking a quick shot. Look at Bill, another big outside shot would force Wake Forest to run with the Hawkeyes, which is what Iowa likes to do. 13 points for Looking Bill. Went through a scoreless drop there, 11 minutes of the first half after hitting two threes to start. 50-45, Hawkeyes by five. points on the game for Randolph Childress. Winters back in at forward. Turnover. Childress the feed for Rush. Crashing the boards with Winters and Webb. And this is going to be a tough call. It's going to be on James Winters instead of Jay Webb. Jay Webb should have gone right in and said, oh, it's my foul, my foul. Because Winters is going to pick up his fourth personal. It could have gone either way. And if Webb was smart, he would have helped his teammate out. But the starter, Winters, is going to get the foul. But a great, great situation for Wake Forest and dishing it off to Rodney Rogers down the middle. Winters goes out with four fouls, and Val Barnes returns for Iowa. The ruckus is inside here. It's the arrival of the Utah youth. Coming into their warm-up uniforms, identifiable in red. And as we told you earlier, the bulk of this crowd is Kentucky Wildcat fans. As many as 12,000, the estimates are. Good job of securing the tickets by the Wildcat fans. <laughs> they only started with 250, and they've got about 12,000. 14-25 remains here in the second half. Iowa 50 to 49, and Rogers with a chance to tie it up for Wake Forest from the free throw line. Well, Iowa had defensively picked things up, got a couple rebounds, some quick shots, and Iowa, if they can get their running game going, but again, take good shot selections. Looking, Bill, trying for three. 
Webb on the rebound, and he's fouled. The ball will not drop for him. And that's the quickest shot that Iowa has had all game. They've come down. Lukey Bill has hit three-pointers for the Hawkeyes. He's got three three-pointers in this game. That one, he just comes up short. But an offensive rebound for the Hawkeyes, and Iowa has gotten beat, which is a big surprise, on the boards. Derek Hicks picks up his third. 14-15 to go. Picks in foul trouble. They don't have a true substitute for him. They would go with Banks, a 6'6 sophomore forward. So we'll be watching that closely. Right now, the teams continue to shoot well. Iowa up to 66%. And uh, utilizing their bench as they do every game, that has been a factor. 52 to 49. Iowa pressing deep now. Well, you saw the uniforms, what team is in what color. Wake Forest is in gold. They were 6-0 and oh at one point. They're 6-2 in their gold uniforms. They have four uniforms. Great pass by Childress. He's done a super job getting the ball inside to Rodney Rogers. And you're not going to stop that. Rogers, 19 points. He had 26 in the first round against Tennessee Chattanooga. But Wake Forest has gone down to Florida State, and they were going to wear their gold uniforms in Florida State. Florida State said, no, no, we got gold. <laughs> and at that point, they'd been 6-2 six, six in them. Rodgers picks up the foul, going for the rebound. Good pick right there, and Luke and Bill trying to get open on the baseline, and you see Murray with the pass, nice pass inside. A little bit of body right there, but it was a good exchange as far as setting picks down there to open up Murray for that pass. And Murray hits. <laughs> Iowa solid from the free throw line. Now up by three points. 54 to 51. That press has not bothered Wake Forest in the first half. In the second half, they pick things up a little bit to try and break that press as far as breaking it quickly and then taking a quick shot. And they took a couple four percentage shots. Childress. And with Childress handling the, the things as far as the offense is concerned, things get settled down. Travel call against Randolph Childress. Nine turnovers by Wake Forest. Childress does a good job penetrating to the basket. He thought he got the defensive call as far as the foul was concerned, but they saw the officials a little shuffle of the feet. He averages nearly 20 points a game. He's a key performer. He's a fiery guy out there. He keeps everybody pepped up as well. Well, he can miss his first three, four shots, and he'll go by Dave Odom and say, I'm hot, coach, I'm hot. Miles played on top in women's play. Stephen F. Austin leading Clemson. And Virginia on top of Florida. Number two seed. There are three women's teams that are still in with the same as the men. Iowa women and men, Vanderbilt men and women, North Carolina men and women. points for Childress. Iowa by one. Glasper and Barnes in the backcourt now for Iowa. And that's been the big advantage when Iowa has missed him. Stephen Deacons have been able to get the rebound and kick the ball out whether they get a fast break, but at least they can set up in their half-court game, and that has hurt Iowa. They have not hit the ball. Earl, fast pass for looking bill, and he connects. Bill, 15 points now. His career high is 18 against Minnesota this year. 56-53 Hawkeye lead. 11-20 to go. Children 
Woodruff for three. We're tied at 56, 17 points for Randolph Children. Barnes. Barnes! Wake Forest again doing a great job screening out. Iowa just has not been able to get on those offensive boards. Delani Owens came up with that one. Lucas and Childress, the backcourt pair now for Wake. Picks that are knocked away. Good recovery. Glass were all over him. They're going to call a foul on Glass for reaching in, but defensively, they were able to stop Rodney Rogers from taking that baseline, but Rogers recouping, making a good pass down low. First time, Glass for Owens will go to the line. While the fluid styling of the Mazda 929 may be timeless, the 929 Personal Lease Offer is considerably shorter. Because now you can lease the 929, complete with dual airbags, anti-lock brakes, and European leather, for just $399 per month and nothing down. So see your Mazda dealer today. Like all good things, this offer must soon come to an end. Five thousand dollars for the baby. I'm embarrassed to take this. You could do something with it. My fault. Go on a cruise. If your mother and I want to do that, we'll do that. I can't pay this back. I'll pay it back by doing the same thing for your grandchild. Why did Hertz invent number one club goal service? It's to beat the rush hour. See, every plane and everybody seems to land at once. But with goal service, there's no stopping at the counters and no paperwork. Instead, you go nonstop to your waiting car with your name and lights. Only Hertz has number one club goal. The best reason yet why Hertz beats the rush hour. To Hertz, the rest of the day is a piece of cake. outlasts the Energizer battery. It keeps going and going and... A neighborhood like no other. I'm gonna get you. A night known for drama. Officer down! We've got a hostage situation here. April 1st, picket fences moves to Thursday. Well, some coaches just can't get enough basketball. That's Eddie Folger, the men's Vanderbilt coach, Jim Bob to the women's coach here at Vandy. Both watching today. Folger has his team into the Sweet 16 the men's side and of course uh, the Vandy women won their opening round against California. Well my math is so bad I never was good in that subject but there are six teams I said three but Vanderbilt won with the men and women North Carolina you got Louisville Western Kentucky and Virginia uh, Virginia yep and Western Kentucky mentioned yeah so that's kind of interesting to see how both men and women proceed the rest of the way in the NCAA postseason play and here it is tied at 56 10 26 remaining in the second half. Harrison, back out for Lucas. Lucas and Harrison in the backcourt. Hicks, Owens, and Rodney Rogers. And there's a sample of what that guy can do. So strong. And what a touch. Well, they just really pass the ball around, make things open up for him in the middle, and they get a good pass inside to him. Earl responds. That's been a big difference as far as Rodney Rogers getting the ball. Wake Forest being patient on offense. A.C. Earl ties it at 58. 12 points for Earl. Rodgers at 21 points and 5 rebounds. Earl 12 points, only 2 rebounds at this point. You know, he won't be blank the rest of the way. Trelawney Owens, a 4-point lead for Wake. Well, that was a hard shot. There's an offensive rebound by Winters. Four fouls, has to stay aggressive. 
the 6'5 junior. There's a workhorse underneath. They call him Skywalker. They're not able to hear. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation to try and screen him out, and the ball falls to him, basically, and he gets fouled in good concentration, putting the ball back in. We're tied at 60. Winners goes to the line. One shot. And you talk about A.C. Earl as far as his point production right now. There's a rebound by him. But there's a lot of NBA scouts and general managers in this crowd today to see what kind of center A.C. Earl is. And down the V for visitor and the H for home. The light lights up on the home side, and that's Iowa. That's right. <laughs> with those arrows point one way or the other. Earl missing, and it's rebounded by Wake Rodney Rogers. I'll leave it at 60. Second chance points, taking advantage. The game's tied. And that's good for three. Childress, 20 points for Randolph Childress over his average. Casey Earl feels he's been getting hit on the arm on those shots. He's just got to keep taking it back up. His own rebound and a good effort there over Owens. Yeah, where's the foul? <laughs> Daddy wants an extra point tack down to that one. Well, you know the officials can't hear that. <laughs> 63 to 62. Wake Forest is steal by Millard. Smith kicks it back outside. Banks won't drop for Barnes. And Rodgers comes away. Two on two. For Childress, and it's tipped away by Barnes. That was the first series of Iowa attacking the offensive board. Rogers coming down with the ball and kind of swings it, doesn't know. Millard is right behind him, but the Hawkeyes cannot take advantage of it. Eight twelve to go, one point. Wake Forest leads. Mark Lucas. Owens. Well drop for him. Rebound by Hicks. The Demon Deacon. Childress. Demons on the boards, huh? Yeah, they sure are. Nice turn around by Owens. And as well as both teams shot in the first half, they're missing a little bit more, and Wake Forest is just control the boards. Iowa, number one in the nation. Eight zero, dribbles it off his foot, and they call it to Iowa, but Iowa, the number one team in the nation as far as rebound margin, are getting beat on the boards. Wake Forest leads by three, 7.38 to go. Final Four, April 3rd on CBS. Don't you just love a good upset? Well, how about if we give you an even better one? In an independent 100,000-mile test, the Oldsmobile Achieva beat the Honda Accord. It also beat Toyota Camry. So if you're looking for a new car, pick one that can go all the way. It's your choice. Pretty serious. Light gear by L.A. Tech. Think of the upper class of sneakers on the court. That is real cool. What if you thought of it? Some big college AAA master's degree have them. There must be some brainy mugs. If people start having too much fun with this, they're going to ban it. <laughs> Gotta own the light if you want to own the night. can shorten its life. This is Pennzoil, the friction-fighting motor oil that protects more engines than any other motor oil in America. Choose Pennzoil. Use Pennzoil, and you'll get quality engine protection in each and every drop. Pennzoil, performance.
performance, protection, quality. These days, people who want to save money on lunch are brown bagging it. Because McDonald's original hamburger is still just 59 cents. Our delicious cheeseburger is 69 cents. And that is no baloney. If this reminds you of the productivity in your office, get the copiers Buyers Lab gave their highest rating for uptime. Meet us and get productive. You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. Well, in attendance today, uh, several of the people from the pros, Don Nelson, head coach, GM of the Golden State Warriors, Mike Dunleavy, coach of the Bucks, Jerry Krause, GM of the Bulls, and they're all looking at the same guy, and he's easy to see out here today, A.C. Earl, the senior. Well, in this game, they're looking at the big guy, and the next game, they're all looking at Jamal Mashburn, and Nelly was telling me earlier that, uh, hey, we got a lottery pick. He's got to look for somebody big. 5-62, and make it a one-point lead. Barnes. Wake Forest by one. Hawkeyes continue to press. It's not a real aggressive press. It created the odd trap with it, but Wake Forest has not been bothered too much. Rodgers for Kalani Owens, and then Rodgers breaks for the basket, but it's Murray there for Iowa. Iowa coming out of that timeout was in a man-to-man. -man. Smith. Kevin Smith, the junior from Fort Worth, seven points. Iowa by one. Seesaw battle continues. Largest lead belonged to Wake Forest, seven points. Back in the first half at 18-11. And when you can get a defensive rebound, you can get your break going, and that's what happened with Iowa. Kevin Smith just picked it up, and the defense was not able to get back and find him. Rodgers hasn't hit the long ones today. Earl rebounds. And really not that bad a foul by Mark Lucas because it stops the break. Second on Lucas. Iowa by a point. Well, more action coming today on CBS coverage of the tournament. UCLA and Michigan, the top seed out west. And Utah and Kentucky right here in Nashville, Kentucky, the top seed in the southeast. Iowa by one. Smith and Barnes, the backcourt. Looking Bill, Earl, and Murray, the front court. Iowa really looking to get that ball inside to Earl, and then he gets double teamed, and, and they kick it back out. Barnes fouled just as he let the shot go. Third on Lucas, Mark Lucas. Iowa has gone through spurts as far as their offense is concerned. They just kind of pass the ball around the perimeter, not real quick, and then all of a sudden they pick things up and pick it into second or third gear, and the passes are a little quicker, and then they attack the defense a little bit better. Harrison Banks leads from Wake Forest. Six returns. He's played a solid game for Wake. And in the backcourt, we'll have Childress and Harrison again. Barnes from the line for Iowa. Barnes last year only, this year is only a 74% free throw shooter. Last year, he was 86%. He was 21st nationally. And uh, he hurt his foot though last year, so he's had to kind of work himself back in, and he's had a great senior year. He hits for two. Ten points for Barnes. Three-point Iowa lead. 6.09 to go. This one looks like it's going to go right to the wire. Iowa, oh. Iowa trapped in that front court that time off the man-to-man -man rather than the zone, and they really had to hustle back on defense. Charlie Harrison. Goes to Rogers, and Rogers left hands it up. left-handed 23 and he, points and he really uses his body well here he goes down get that pass and look at him come back around the basket and he's going to have a chance to go to the line but AC early is very surprised that that foul was called but you have to look at the angle how Rodney Rogers went in and for most people they're going to see that a foul was called or 
was me. And they did call it. <laughs> a chance for a three-point play and a chance to tie. Four points for Rodney Rogers. And 26 in the opener here in Nashville against Tennessee Chattanooga. We're tied at 68. 5.46 to go. Lee Forrest pressing down deep. Barnes trapped. Barnes calling a timeout. So with 5.35 to go in the second half, we are tied the number four and five seeds in the Southeast. In Paris, France, a cup of coffee costs $5. In Rome, Italy, a ham sandwich costs $10. And in Copenhagen, Denmark, a chicken dinner costs $50. That's why Sterling does not have a design studio in Paris, Rome, or Copenhagen. We design and make our faucets right here. We employ the best of craftsmen and use the finest of materials. But we do our designing here and pass the savings on to you. This is Sam Davis, Vice Chairman for Sterling. Thank you. So you like defense? Well, Oldsmobile covers you like nobody else. They'll get you gas if you run out. Go as far as providing a loaner if you need one. And they'll even let you exchange your new car if it's not just what you wanted. Not bad, considering most of them are under six feet tall. It's your money. There's cause for celebration. It's the opening of the latest ITT Sheraton Hotel. Sheraton is now the ultimate global hotel chain for business travelers with 420 hotels, inns, resorts, and all suites, and one high standard of service in over 60 countries. What does ITT bring to the party? One billion dollars worth of improved systems, services, and renovations. ITT, we're adding more than just our name. Topping pizzas, a salad for four, even cookies. Dinner for four, just $13.99. A great reason to stop and smell the pizza. You forgot to pay me. Division two, second to none. The NCAA Division II Basketball Championship. Next Saturday on CBS Sports. You're looking at Tom Davis, coach of Iowa. Tim Ryan with Ann Myers here. We see that Iowa's closed the rebound margin. And both teams continue to shoot well. Iowa 25 of 43, Wake 27 of 43. And we have 5.24 to go tied at 68. Smith and Barnes in the backcourt for Iowa. Earl, Looking Bill, and Banks. Bell Barnes, big three-pointer. Now with 10 points. And that's the thing that's going to open things up for A.C. Earl as far as the outside shooting here defensively. Iowa knocking the ball away. It goes out of bounds, but they came up with one big steal earlier in that first half. Childress, Rogers, Harrison, Owens, and Hicks. Neither team has gotten rattled when they got down. starting five on. They've made only 13 substitutions to 32 by Iowa. Rogers forcing it up. Foul before the ball went up. Well, looking Bill trying to draw the charge, and a lot of times you can get it on the big guy because their shoulders have a tendency to look like they're just driving right into you, and all Rodney Rogers is doing is making a turn, and you could almost make a no call and just let the play go. But they end up calling us. Four fouls on foul. Looking Bill, and he has to leave. You know, we mentioned about...
the substitutions for Iowa and the two players that are out, Jim Bartles and Kevin Skillick. And Bartles, a three-point shooter for Iowa, averages 16 points and seven rebounds. And they may have missed him a little bit in this game to open up that inside game for the Hawkeyes. And Looking Bell leads with 15 points, and he's been hitting three-pointers today. He's not normally their outside shooter. Rodgers made the first. Can draw a weight back within one. And he does. 439 to go. Hawkeyes by one. trying to create something for himself and then got caught up in the air instead of kicking it back outside. Give credit to the Wake Forest defense really making it frustrated for AC Earl. Kalani Owens. Wake Forest the board. That has hurt Iowa in this game. A full miss by Charlie Harrison and a turnover to Iowa. Reach-in foul call against Wake Owens. Picked up his second. Now we're into the penalty here. One and one. Murray at the line. 17 foul on Wake Forest. And way at the other end. You know they can really hear Coach Adams. That's Adam. right. And <laughs> <laughs> Murray hits. Murray really has been a nice surprise for the Iowa Hawkeye team out of high school. 6'4", jumping over a 6'4 kid for a dunk. And this guy can really get up in the air. Tom Davis has really been pleased with the way he's played this season. Iowa is 14 of 15 from the free throw line today. And they have a three-point lead. Kevin Smith is replaced by Glasper. Ontario Glasper comes in at guard for Iowa. Another freshman from Albion, Michigan. Kind of a dangerous pass right there. Now remember, we've got more action ahead. UCLA and Michigan, top seed in the West. Kentucky, the top seed in the Southeast. And here in Nashville against Utah. All ahead on CBS today as we continue our road to the Final Four. Three-point Iowa lead, 3.46 to go. Rogers finally gets the long-range bomb. 29 points for Rodney Rogers. Tied at 73. inside the A.C. Earl, and then once Earl gets it, he has to make sure he's got a good position for that shot. Iowa with two freshmen on the floor in this crucial situation. Confidence shown by Tom Davis, their coach. And right now, uh, Winters and Lookingville both with four, and Lookingville was up to come back in, and he is in the lineup. He'll inbound it. And those are the two forwards for Iowa. Lookingville not able to get it in, calling his timeout. 259 remains. We're tied at 73, number four and number five in the Southeast. I hear you're looking for a new car. That's nice. But have you considered an Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme Special Edition? It's got four doors, a hot V6, and a four-speed automatic like the Maxima GXE, but costs about 5000 less. But hey, what's $5,000 these days? It's your money. Here comes Jim, in for a pit. Jim, backyard's next. Hey, no duels, non-alcohol, 70 calories, perfect. After all, When you want the refreshing taste of beer without the alcohol, think O'Doul's. It's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. We live forever through our deeds.
dreams, the lives we touch, and what we leave behind. In 1843, a company dedicated itself to that proposition, and it did so by writing the nation's first mutual life insurance policy. That company was Mutual of New York, and we're still in the business of insuring long and prosperous futures. After all, we've been looking forward for the past 150 years. What we need now is the beach. And the Bruce! And the Bruce! Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer battery. It keeps going and going. You know, our competitor is twice as likely to have a network outage. If you're trusting your important 800 calls to them, well, one of the 800 reasons to choose AT&T 800 service, the best in the business. They call it the city that never sleeps. They're right. So what's going on all night long? An all-new 48 Hours, Wednesday. Tim Ryan Ann Myers, Nashville, Vanderbilt University's Memorial Gymnasium. Tied at 73, 2.59 to go. And Iowa with just one timeout remaining, having to take that one, unable to inbound the ball. And Barnes hits the big one. Barnes, the senior, 75, 73, 15 points for Barnes. He's still alive. He's still alive in the second half. All 13 are in the second half. Ten lead changes, seven ties in this game so far. Biggest lead was seven by Wake early on. Driving is Rogers. Tied again, 31 for Rodney Rogers. Turnover, huge. Harrison had it handed to him. Wait for the chance for the lead. Original starters on the floor for Wake Forest. Hicks, Rogers, Owens up front. Shoulders, Harrison in the backcourt. The winners of guarding Rodney Rogers. There's a timeout by Wake Forest. And winners with four fouls had a tough time that last possession. Forrest takes the timeout. 159 to go. We're tied at 75. Isn't it amazing how quick and agile these big guys are? You should test drive the 88 LSS by Oldsmobile. It's very agile. But don't take our word for it. Take car. In Nashville, each team has one timeout remaining. They're both in the bonus. Tied at 75, 1.58 to go. Wait for their original starting five. Barnes and Smith in the backcourt for Iowa. Millar, the freshman up front. His winners and Irving. Childress. Well, that's the one guy you didn't want shooting the shot. Wake Forest knew it was going in. 23 points for Randolph Childress. The sophomore guard from Clinton, Maryland. Iowa just sagged off a little bit too much on Childress. He's been hot from that outside. This for Barnes. Barnes, the pointer off the mark. And the rebounds again. They're going to call a foul on the wire, pushing Rodney Rogers underneath. Bell Barnes missed the next shot, but the bread and butter all year long has been the rebounds for the Iowa Hawkeyes. You can see A.C. Earl, Derek Hicks has done a great job on A.C. Earl as far as keeping him away from the boards all game long. Hicks has only had four points. They were early in the game. But he has worked tremendously hard on the defensive end to keep A.C. Earl away from the boards. Dell with four fouls on him. Staying in there, of course, with 119 to go. Rogers missing the first... Free throw and Wake Forest rebounds. Rogers with 31 points on the game. Wake Iowa. leads by three. They have the ball. Iowa's got to go into a man-to-man -man pick them up. They've got to force something. They're calling it out now. Winners on Harrison. You got Owens and Smith in a mismatch there. They switch back. Wake Forest didn't see it. Smith now comes out on Harrison. Rogers fouled on the way up. A.C. Earl shakes the 
shaking his head again. But what happens with the left-handed shooter, Rodney Rogers on that right baseline coming back, and his shot is right on the defensive player. So he's got a chance for another one, two shots this time. Second foul on Earl. Shooting foul, Rogers with two. Winters goes out, Murray comes in. The baseline move right there, Earl's got his hands on him, but see, he's gonna come out, and Rodney Rogers is the one that jumped right into A.C. Earl, and Earl's like, I can't believe it, but once the defensive player goes up in the air, majority of the time, the official's gonna call it on that defense. Rogers gets the first of two, four-point lead Wake Forest. Rogers with 32 points, he's got a career-high 35 against Duke. Rodgers plays so relaxed, so poised. Looking, Bill. Inside the range. Two Wake Forest players are there. Owens and Harrison. Well, Looking, Bill knew he had to foul. Childress was just talking back to him. I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> One seconds remain with a timeout. 80 to 75, Wake Forest. How about some trivia? Who holds the record for being voted the most outstanding player of this tournament? Okay, here's an even tougher one. Has any car ever made the Consumer's Digest Best Buy list more than once? The Oldsmobile 88 has. In fact, it's made that list three years in a row. And now you can get this 88 Special Edition for just $18,995. It's your money. It has a powerful overhead valve engine. Smooth five-speed transmission has the best resale value of any make and comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. The cost, just $1,999. It's the John Deere 12 half horsepower STX 38 lawn tractor. At just $1,999, it's our lowest price ever. Dean Witter believed every success story was unique. We have a sacred trust to protect our investors. Whether it's the success of a small business. To maintain conservative policies. Saving for college. To put the interest of our clients first. Or planning an early retirement. From getting in on the ground floor to getting all the way to the top. Dean Witter is there to help every client make it every step of the way. Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. You bet they will. Bodies of evidence April 2nd. Wake Forest took the timeout. There was no foul called on Looking Bill on the play, although it looked like there could have been. And he would have been out of the game had it been called. There is a foul called on Barnes there. Well, both guards going after the ball that time, and Owens just kind of threw it out there for anybody to get. Call the holding foul on Val Barnes is first. Wake Forest has no timeouts remaining. Iowa has one. 31 seconds on the clock. It you know, shows you how tough the Big Ten is. Tom Davis's team lost eight all season long, and seven were in the Big Ten. The only loss outside the Big Ten was against an ACC school, Duke. Childress widens it to six. 24 points for him. He has really played under control this game, really taking charge of the offense. 82 to 75, Wake Forest. Smith for three. Kicks on the rebound for Wake. 
Fouled by Barnes. Wake Forest, their 11th NCAA appearance, their third straight. Last year lost to Louisville in the first round. And right now, they've got a good chance to move to the Sweet 16. I'm happy for Wake Forest, and there's a, a team that will not forget Chris Street and what he has meant to the University of Iowa, the state of Iowa, and to this country. Hicks rattles it around and gets it to go. 82 to 75, five points for Hicks. His performance today, not so much measured uh, in points scored. He has just been an all-around solid performer, defensively particularly. 84 to 75. Smith for three. Front iron, Murray. Murray for three. Yes. Four seconds remain. Six-point lead for Wake Forest. And they'll have the ball when we return. This isn't the camera you were talking about. I know. This is so sporty. I got a V6 Air automatic standard anti-lock brakes. Is it fun to drive? It's great. The control and the power. It's a lot more car than I thought I could afford. Ah, hot. It was 5,000 less than the Camry. Really? What is this? It's a Pontiac, the new Grand Am GT. Just for you. Too many businesses today leave their customers up in the air. But Allstate is different. Your Allstate agent's job is to keep you secure for years to come to stick by you so that you stay with Allstate for your car insurance and home insurance for years for life. You're in good hands with Allstate. We know we see all the men you have to be just how much you give all the life Gillette Sensor Technology comes the Gillette Series. Shaving, aftershave, and deodorant products to help a man look, feel, and be his best. The Gillette Series with Gillette Sensor is redefining men's grooming. Pizza Hut. Oh, great! Your other pizza. Oh, another one! Get two medium one-topping pizzas, a salad for four, even cookies, dinner for four, just $13.99. A great reason to stop and smell the pizza. You forgot to pay me. Thursday, April 1st. Don't miss the show. Critics say it's better than L.A. law used to be. Jimmy getting shot is no coincidence. Picket fences moving to Thursdays. Appears headed into the Sweet 16. Kentucky and Utah next. Here from Nashville, Wake Forest ball with the lead by six. Iowa desperately pressing and that's it. So the at large Demon Deacons from Wake Forest moved to 21 and 8. And into the Sweet 16. And so our Chevrolet players of the game, Wade Lookfield from Iowa. From Wake Forest and Tim Ryan. Brad Myers, I'm Tim Ryan, saying this has been an exclusive presentation at CBS Sports, home of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Let's go to Jim Nance. Tim. So two ACC teams headed to the Southeast Regional, Wake Forest and Florida State. Two are also in the East, Carolina and Virginia. Now we pick up Oklahoma State and Louisville with Dick and Al. Randy Rutherford replaces Scott Sutton in the Oak State lineup. And Rozier will be on the line. There is Scott Sutton.